the Super Bowl. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's a cold, little windy day here in Wisconsin, so I'm not starting the supercharger install today, but I've been wanting to lower this car, the CTS, a bit, and uh, so I'm going to use today as an opportunity to do that. Uh, as you can see, it's already pretty low, and that's uh, factory. I'm sure the springs have settled over time a little more than factory. But we, as we know, the CTS is, uh, at least the coupes tend to uh, sit pretty low already. So I only wanted to drop it a little bit. And I was thinking about coilovers. I was thinking about doing an air ride system. And I'm still on the fence about doing an air ride system. I may still do that. But I needed to change out the uh, front struts because they were due to be changed out. And I had a couple of things that came into my possession at a really low price. Uh, legally, by the way. And so this gives me the opportunity to try lowering it a bit to see how it looks on coilover, um, on uh, on uh, lowering springs. I'm typically not a fan of lowering springs. I did them on my G8, which dropped it about a, a one and a half inches and the ride was pretty awful. So I ended up switching it over to coilovers. Uh, but I'm, these only drop you actually less than an inch, 0.9, point um, and so I thought, okay, I'll give that a try because it's a pretty low drop and I'm not looking for a big drop as you can see already. Uh, so now while I was talking about what it came across, the guy had these, uh, new struts for the all wheel drive. Uh, as you, you can always tell them they for the all wheel drive because on the uh, rear wheel drive, you have the fork at the bottom here. You don't. Uh, and the reason uh, I only paid what a hundred bucks for these and the reason is you can see he broke this off He didn't move him when he was pulling them in it, when he was pulling into his garage and he hit and broke it So I got these for a hundred bucks So I'm just going to use mine on my car and transfer them over to here and I'm going to replace the springs in here This is the other thing I got. I got these right here for 75 bucks a uh, guy on his CTSV, he uh, was selling it, so he was putting it back to stock. So he sold me these, and these are the ones that are for the wheel-wheel drive and for the all-wheel drive. Uh, those are the part numbers for the front and the part numbers for the rear. And so they don't drop it a lot, which is just what I'm looking for. So I want to transfer the fronts over onto these right here. And I also want to... Uh, Oh, the other thing is, these are the, uh, what I'm going to use to compress the springs. Only use good ones. Don't use some little cheap ones. You will kill yourself. And it always helps to, I mean, with something like this to have some type of uh, uh, impact to help you out. And there was one other thing I did in preparation for this as well. I went on the eBay and bought, purchased these off of there. They're used. Uh, they go mount on the bottom of here. It's going to make my job a lot easier. Um, I'm in uh, I'm in Wisconsin, the Rust Belt over here. So things can get pretty hard to get off. And these are sometimes these bolts, you can't get them out. Um, and so and sometimes you can't even get them off from around here. So to make my job a lot easier, I went over and purchased these uh, used and I'm just gonna be able to mount them right on here, which is gonna make my job a lot easier of mounting them into the car. I like you uh, guys with the rear wheel drive. You guys are lucky because you guys have the, the mounted fork on here and the forks are a ton easier to get out. Now, before removing everything, what you wanna do is park your car on a nice level ground and get your measurements before you start this so you can know how much yours dropped. So go around to each wheel and record what was the height uh, from the bottom of your fender right here down to the ground for each of your four corners, each wheel. That way you can know how just how much of your drop you had. As you guys can see, I just ended up just putting mine all on stands and just taking all the wheels off. I play around doing one wheel at a time. I actually have three stands, uh, six stands underneath mine just to be safe and the wheels, just to keep it all nice and safe. But why play around? Just go ahead and lift it up, take all the wheels off and get started. Yeah, first thing we're gonna need to do is remove this strut brace bar right here. Uh, then we got to take out all the bolts up here. I'm just going to loosen them so when we do the work down there, the strut doesn't just drop down on, on me. We're going to do that for both sides. Uh, I already have a YouTube video out here showing how to remove the front strut. 
struts. So I'm not gonna walk you through that in this video. If you wanna see how to do that, go ahead and uh, definitely hit that subscribe button and check out one of the videos of me uh, removing um, and installing the front strut. All right, so I'm gonna loosen this bolt right here. I'm sorry, this nut. I'm gonna loosen that, take it off most of the way, but not all the way. Gotta keep it on there so that when we release this off of here, just so it's gonna fly all the way off. And of course, we gotta take that bolt, off, that nut off as well. And other than that, those are really the only two items from the bottom we really need to worry about. Also, I'm making it sound a lot easier than it is. I have newer upper control arms, so my bolt shouldn't be all that bad coming off. So normally this bolt right this uh, bolt right here will turn at the same time trying to turn the nut, and you need to put an Allen wrench in there to hold that while you turn the nut. Um, I have a newer control upper control arm, so it's not that bad for me. Take it all the way off again because I want to keep some on there for when I pop this off. Turn the wheel in the other direction, give me a little bit more play. Keep them straight. Now this is again the driver side one. Now I can get my pickle fork down up in there. And I'm gonna take my sledgehammer and hit it. All right, so I got the uh, front passenger side one out. Uh, this is the one I'm gonna be putting in. And it's like I was telling you, I already purchased some of these used to, so I won't have to try to get that off of there. Uh, and another little thing, you may think when you're removing this, remember I have a YouTube out there showing how to remove these, so go watch that. But when you're removing these, just back the bolt out, just most of the way, but not all the way. Cause when it pops off, you want the bolt to be able, this uh, nut, I'm sorry, to be able to catch it, all right? And then when you get your pickle fork, let me grab it. When you have your pickle fork, you're gonna put it down in between here. And you're gonna take your, your, your three pound, your five pound sledgehammer, whatever you have you, and you're gonna hit it down. Now, this part is probably gonna be underneath the uh, your wheel well, so you won't have a lot of swing, but you wanna hit it down, down, down as much as possible. As you're doing it, just keep doing it down. And you're gonna to wanna to keep striking this part right here too. You can strike from underneath, you can strike right here, but just keep striking that really hard and pushing this down too. 
and eventually it'll pop off. You may think it's not gonna happen, something wrong with yours that is stuck, is different than everybody else's. No, it's just hard to get off, okay? So just hit it down, down, get you a nice size pickle for it, get it up in between the, there, and just hit it down and you'll get it. All right, one of the first things we wanna do, we don't wanna remove this nut yet because this is under, uh, the spring is under pressure right now uh, and that will kill us. <laughs> so what we wanna do is clean this nut up because once we compress the spring down, we wanna be able to remove that. So in order to help us out, what we can do is clean up these threads and put a little um, um, JB Bla a little uh, PB Blast or something on there. If you've ever had it where you started backing out a nut and then all of a sudden it got tighter as you took it off, it's because your threads were probably dirty and that grunt got up in there and made it more difficult for you. So just take a, a wire brush, clean those off first, and then we'll put some, uh, some type of lubricant on there so we can soak in there. So when we're done compressing, it'll be ready for us. And I've already put new uh, upper control arms on. I just put these on not too long ago. I got a YouTube video out there on how to do that too as well and how to preload them as well. Uh, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and check that one out. But if you haven't changed yours in a while, check your ball joint out over here. If it's moving around easily, <laughs> it's probably time to change them out. So in here, I have new bushings here that came with the upper control arm already pre-pressed in there and new upper ball joint. So these are nice and solid.
Now, most likely this is turning at the same time as this right here. So I need to get a box stand in there, 15 millimeter to hold it while I turn that off. I couldn't find the right size um, Allen's wrench in my box. I think I broke it last time I was trying to do this. So I have a star bit that I'm hoping will work for me. Let's see if we can make this work. All right, looks like it's moving. So, the hole is rounded out now. Um, I'm not surprised. You guys who aren't from the Midwest don't know our pain out here. So, I'm just going to get my angle grinder. I'm just going to cut that off because I'm not reusing the shock or anything. I just want this uh, top mountain over here. That's the only thing I need off of here. So, I'm going to cut the uh, bolt on off. There we go. Cap off. Now we can release the uh, pressure.
There we go. This is what we need. This is what we're replacing, actually. Although I will probably take this rubber piece out and reuse this one opposed to the old one from the other one. We have a bump stop and we need to trim it down and you can use a knife whatever you have it's kind of thick I don't think it's all that bad I don't have any sharp knives so I'm gonna use a little bit of overkill over here to cut it down um, the tapered end that's the part we're gonna be removing so we'll be cutting it down roughly around up in this area are the ones that go in the front and you want to make sure to line up the end points of these springs see how that's going to line up right there This right here also has a point. See how that point right there? It has to line up with the end of the spring. So that applies to the top and the bottom. You want to make sure both points are lined up with their respective end points, bottom points. Now it's time to compress them. Remember, you want to have it 
the end of the spring touching that. go. Got it through. Where's my little nut? All right, so now we have the spring in. We have them lined up, the end of the springs lined up with the rubber bushing at the bottom, and the top spring lined up with the, uh, the end stop on the rubber bushing at the top. Uh, and we have the, um, the, um, what do you want to call that, the dust shield on there, and we also have the the bump stop in there that we trimmed down. So now we're gonna remove, uh, re release the pressure. And I do have the screw up at the top too as well. So it's nighttime now, dark out here. So I'm gonna be limited on what I can show you, but I'm disconnecting from removing the uh, sway bar link. I'm on the rears now. So we took the bolt out right from here, cleaned it up really good, put an Allen wrench in there, and took that off. So with that pulled out, then I have to also do this bolt right here and then I'll be to drop this down ready I'll be to drop this down and with this drop down I should be able to get the spring out put the other one in put it back up sounds simple and straightforward let's see if that really works that way all right guys don't you guys try this now okay I'm just showing you what I did but I don't want you guys to try this um, so it would take a lot more to actually drop down the hole we're in. So I'm changing out the springs. Uh, I didn't want to do all that extra work. I've been out here for many hours. So what I did was I just got my uh, cutter and I'm just, I released the uh, pressure enough where it was just a little bit, it just needed a bit more to be to get the spring out. Couldn't do it. Uh, so most of the pressure was already leashed, uh, released. So then I just ended up cutting the spring the rest of the way. So now I'll be able to go ahead and remove that. But don't you guys do that. Do it the proper way, please. All right, so what I did was, you see that little cap right here at the top of the spring? This is the top of the spring. That's the bottom of the spring. After, when I had it out, I removed this rubber cap, this whole little uh, foam cap right here, 
and then I put it into the spring and then slid it in because you wouldn't be able to compress it down enough to be able to get past this little boot. I mean, don't do it my way so you won't have this issue, but that's how I end up getting past that. So I put the rubber cap on first and then was able to slide it in. So now I'm able to just push it all back up and be done. All right, here is a breakdown of the numbers. So this represents the front of the car, the back of the car, driver's side versus passenger side. So this is your driver's side front wheel, the left front wheel. And these are the measurements before putting the lowering springs on. So driver's side front, 28.25 inches. Uh, passenger side front, 28 inches. Left rear, 29.25 inches. And right rear, 29 inches. So even though I was on a level ground, it seems as though my driver's side was sitting a quarter of an inch higher than my passenger side. Now, when we after putting the springs on, the numbers encircled are those. So it seemed to have leveled it all out. So from the front, we're 28.5 across the board. And from the rear, we're 28 inches across the board. So we got a clean, um, we'll say, one inch drop in the back. Up front, which is funny though, we got about a half an inch uh, increase up front if we use this one as that, that, that measurement guide. So we're actually sitting higher um, in the front than we were before <laughs> we put the lowering springs on. Uh, this is, um, and I rolled it around for a bit uh, and this is still about staying about here, but I'm hoping that over time, the next several days, that the drop front is going to drop down further. I'm thinking this is because the springs on the front are going to be stronger springs in the back because those springs holding up, say, the engine, you know what I mean? Whereas in the back, it's just a rear end, you know, most you have back there going on is your fuel tank. Um, so I'm hoping that that means that over time, uh, the next several days will allow this to drop down. If it can drop down, uh, another half an inch, that would be great. If I get a quarter inch, I'll be, I guess, happy, uh, satisfied. Uh, I would love for it to be right around where this is at. This is sitting perfect at 28 inches, and I hope this actually doesn't settle anymore. Another quarter inch, I'll be fine if it settles another quarter inch. Um, but the front, I definitely want, would like to see them settle, hopefully, another half an inch. So those are the measurements. All right, guys, so here is how it's looking the next morning. I've rolled it around for a little bit to help it to settle a little bit quicker. Uh, as you can see, the rear end is really nice and low. I love that. Front end a little bit higher um, based off the numbers, too, but you can kind of visually see it. Uh, you really can't get a finger underneath from the back, uh, but you can definitely get about a, a good finger in from the front. So I used to be able to get two fingers in back here, but now that's not happening. And I can barely get one finger in there. Now the front, the front is actually sitting a bit higher. I can almost get two fingers in, definitely one finger. Uh, I love the uh, stance on that. And I'm sure as uh, the days go by and that front settles a bit more, that stance will get a little better in the front. But that's pretty hot. Look at that. That's good. Nice and tight. Right, as far as ride quality goes, I didn't notice any reduction in ride quality. Uh, again, those are new struts on the front with the with the lowering spring, so I think that's helped out. And I'm going to be putting new shocks on the back too as well, so I think that's going to help out even more. Uh, so overall, I give this a pass. Uh, a two th thumbs up, definitely. Uh, if you like, definitely hit that like button and hit that subscribe button and check out some of the other YouTube videos I have out there. Thanks for watching. Man, this shit damn it big as the Big as the what? Big as the what? Big as the Super Bowl.